Well, praise the Lord, people. This is it. Another beautiful day and another wonderful guest is here with us tonight. You will be blessed. Guaranteed. This man has been a man I had known for over 30 years and he has remained stable, a pastor of pastors. But let's start with some worship song. Let's just play some music and then we'll be back uh, as soon as it's time. So invite someone. Say it's time for day nine. God bless you.
That was, it's always a joy for me to watch that uh, production every time. Well, this is indeed another beautiful day. And uh, already we have in the studio, <laughs> on the other side of the world, a guest for tonight. Such a man I have such respect for. I came to know a lot more about him, even though we've known each other for over 30 years. But first, help me welcome Reverend... Yinka Ojo to the show. Please welcome, sir. Hello, everybody. Good to see you, Dr. Joseph. Nice to be with you from this part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, we will talk a whole lot more. Um, but as, as I love to do it, I would like to ask you to please uh, open up the meeting with a prayer for us. Yes. Let, Let us pray. pray. Our, our Father and our God, God we thank you for this day. This, this is the day, day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad at this day. Father, Father we, invite we invite you to share on this entire, entire broadcast in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, the head of the church, our Savior, we invite you to be the one controlling and directing what we do. Precious Holy Spirit, we adore you. Let your power and your presence be felt in this broadcast today. We give, give you the, the glory, glory and praise, Lord. Lord. For, For we, we pray, pray in Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir, for that prayer. Wow. Well, this is Reverend Yinka Ojo. I have, I'm going to ask him to introduce himself, but I'll just say a little bit uh, now, and, uh, and then we'll get into details. I believe, I believe it's, it's, it's almost 30 years. If, yeah, it should be 30 years. Uh, that uh, we, we, we yeah. he was my, he was one of my pastors yeah. over thirty years ago in Kaduna. Wow! And you still, you've not changed. You look the same. Wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> I tell you, 
Thank, thank you, you for the kind words. words. <laughs> it's it's amazing. amazing. I'm, I'm so, so glad to, you know, know to, to see how, how much God, God has used you over the years, over the decades. Years, over the decades. I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad to be here today. Um, to, to, the joy is with you to celebrate with you and your, and your family and, and the ministry. ministry. And uh, well, well, my, my name, name is Nikao Joe. Joe. I'm, I'm a servant of the living God. I'm a child of God. God. Um, we, we, we have, have a work, work a ministry known as Grace Family International, International Church. Church. Um, we, we started in 1990, my, my wife and myself, and, and uh, the ministry has grown uh, to other parts of Africa, Africa Europe. Europe. USA, um, and, um, and um, we, we thank, thank God, God for what He's doing, doing in, um, in in the, the, the world. We, we but more than anything else, we just feel very blessed, blessed and privileged to be in the, the kingdom, kingdom for such a time, time as this. Amen. And, and I, I believe, believe that, that um, yes, well, you know, for a number of years we lost touch. But God reconnected us back, even on a deeper level, I believe, with you, Dr. Joseph. And I'm so amazed at the plans of God, the way God works his things. His wisdom is beyond finding out. Completely. So I'm so glad to be here today. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, we're going to jump in a little bit more. But uh, I, I wanted to play something. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, some of our guests have I've seen this before. But I want to play something from the early days, at least for us, <laughs> in Kaduna, uh, where we started at uh, Kujama. This yeah. is a, I keep, for me, it's a landmark uh, um, that one needs to keep going back to again and again, uh, reminding one where God started with us. And uh, I didn't know that God had something like this in our future. We just loved the Lord and just wanted to serve and be there. But God had something else in his mind. And so I, I like to start from the beginning. Um, but, but before that, you, you, what year was it that you, 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 you left Kaduna? I'm trying to remember the exact year. 1990. 1990. My God. So that is 31. Would that be 31 years now? Yeah. 1990 to 2000 and 2021. Yeah, 31. Jesus, have mercy. Wow. How time flies. How time flies. <laughs> when you are busy for a lot of time flies. <laughs> How time flies. We're really grateful to, for, for what oh, God yes. does in our lives. Because, like you said, when we're busy for the Lord, He is busy uh, moving things for us. And you don't even have time to, to count time to check time things go so fast but god's grace has always wow. been available to you wow one moment and i'm gonna play this this video that um i i, I wanted you to take a look at uh do you, by the way how is your house that is your house still on <laughs> Oh, can 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 small small. Can 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 small small. small. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I am still looking for this video. I I just saw it right now. Skipped. Okay, but I I just play this one. I just play this one that I have here.
First of all, that was wow, my first wow. crusade in Kujama. In uh, I believe that was 2000. Wow. And, uh, wow. and yeah, we were still in church. And wow. uh, the Lord just laid on my heart. We just knew we wanted yes. to help out. And, and we stepped out. They didn't know what mm. God had in the future. Pastor, can we start this wow. way? Yes. I know I had asked someone this question before, but I have I've heard I've heard many young people ministers who are waiting for the big break before they jump in and serve God. What would you say about how 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 do you really start in the ministry as as a young minister? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, the Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. Hmm. The Bible says they just live by faith. What I have seen with uh, many young ministers today, they don't know that when God calls you, you must step out in faith with nothing to start with. So Jesus Christ said, this is like a seed. First, the blade, the, then the air then the full corn in the air. The Bible says, who has despised the days of small beginnings, the days of small things. So that is what I see many young people don't understand. Um, because, you know, I think God, because of my foundation of understanding the Word of God, faith in the Word of God, uh, I learned that as soon as I got born again, spirit feel, and that faith pleases God. So, with the calling of God, um, we just saw that we need to step out. We didn't have any support. In fact, for the first few months, I had nowhere to, when I when I came back from Kaduna to Ibadan, I had nowhere to live. I had no backing. Nobody was paying me or giving me any money. Um, I had to go and somebody I knew, I had to ask him, beg him. So he allowed me to stay in flat for a while. But we started believing God. And we started going. We had no congregation. Some Pastor, people are waiting for a specially uh, waiting congregation. You will forgive yes. me. I will have to break an in between here. First, you, you threw a bomb, but you just went through it. You said, faith pleases God. It sounded so nice in my ears. Faith pleases God. Yes. We, we all try to please God, but the Bible says without faith is impossible <laughs> to make God happy. But faith pleases God. Yeah. Please say a little bit more on this. Yeah. You see, um, faith, by definition, is un unwavering trust in God hmm. based on His word alone. Your trust in God. Hmm. Founded, not just trust, blind trust, but trust, unwavering trust in God because He has spoken, He has said what He has written or the prophetic, the prophetic direction he has given you. You, you must trust in that word. Mm. There's, There's nothing else you are holding on to. God loves such people. Mm. He has no physical evidence, no wealth, no money, but God says, this is what I want you to do. Take the step. He will always meet you at the other end of your faith. But you must step out first. He will not. God will not tell you everything he wants to bless you with in the future right now or else you will not be walking by faith anymore hmm. you trust him step by step day by day childlike faith that my god is faithful he will not abandon me and uh, i remember um some people said why are you going to full-time ministry they told me they said look uh, i said but the lord has spoken to me that that is his assignment and call on my life and after a while they said these are some people very close to me they said look don't come and meet us to beg for money ah. because we sent you to university. Now you are you left, you finished from university, you are now going into full time ministry mm. as a university graduate. This is not what we bargained for. So I told them, I said, Listen, one thing I am sure of, I will never beg. I've mm. been young, now I'm old, I've never I've seen, seen the righteous forsaken, forsaken. noisy, begging. begging bread. Don't worry, my. God will take care of everything. I didn't know where the money would come from. I didn't know. Where, I didn't have a house. I didn't. Uh, we didn't have a church venue. We had to go and ask and talk to people and say, "Look, can we use your school to gather?" 
and then we had to go on the streets to evangelize people one by one follow them up and then gather them in the church so we didn't have a ministry where uh, you know, some people would just have somebody's church and then go away with half of their members. Or, no, 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 no. We had zero. We started from ground zero, which failed. You know, you, you said some... And, and young pastor, yes. Sorry. You said something that after when you left Kaduna, you left on the word of God. Because God said, now go and start. Yes. But when you came to... Was it Ibadan? You came to Olegos? Yes. Ibadan. Now... I overheard you saying you had to ask for someone for uh, ask someone where to stay to stay with them or something. Now, despite the fact that God had spoken, yes, uh, everything was not just waiting for you to come and take over the land. You still had to do something. I think this aspect is in a way missing today in our generation that we need to remind people the fact that you've gotten a prophecy does not mean that it will just be there. Prophecy to me, I think, is a weapon for warfare to win what you've been promised. It's like peacekeepers. Say something on this area, Pastor. Yes, I, I feel that um, we need to understand that God, God will not... You cannot start from the top. Hmm. You cannot start from the top. Wow. Now, we, we just lost the signal, but it's, it's going to come back. Faith pleases God. And despite the fact that God had spoken to you, had given you a word, somebody had given you a prophecy, the, that's not 100%. It's a guarantee in this, on, from the side of God. But you have a part to play to make this prophecy come to be. If God says you're going to move to a city, you're going to move to a nation, you're going to uh, build something, you're going to be a pastor, you're going to be a bishop, whatever it is that God has promised you in life. It's a promise of the Father. But there is a part that you and I have to play in bringing that into fulfillment. Pastor, please go ahead. Yes, please. Now, you have to understand that the things of God, there's a process to the things of God. Look at Joseph. Hmm. Your namesake in the Bible. <laughs> Look, it did not. When God gave him the vision and the dream, it was so grandiose, so great. In fact, I'm sure he was thinking that, "Oh, I'm going to be the king tomorrow." Hmm. But look at that. First of all, his brothers took him. They put him in the pit. Hmm. Later on, they sold him, and he became a slave for many years. Hmm. He had a promise. Wow. He had a direction from God. He had a calling that was mm. clear. Then, later on, he thought things were rising up for him. Mrs. Potiphar set him up. He ended up in the prison. Mm. But he, he had faith in God. He trusted God that God had spoken to him. And God, will. I will not let go. And ultimately, <clears throat> Pharaoh, the time, when the right time came, Pharaoh called for him. Pastor. And he sat on the throne. Pastor, look, I, I heard something now. I heard something. <laughs> this is. Now, Joseph did not just receive a prophecy from somebody, it was direct download from heaven. <laughs> heaven. Yes. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we receive a word from, from maybe I receive a prophecy, and then we, we, we run with it. If something happens, then we are like doubting. But here was Joseph. It was not just somebody who spoke to him. It was direct. He knew. It was, yet he had problems. He had issues he had to face. What am I trying to bring out? The fact that we have received a word from the Lord or a prophecy through someone does not mean that we have no... We can just go to bed and just, just drink Kool-Aid and expect it's going to fall on our laps. Yeah. Wow. Now, yeah. yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and look at David. Mm. David was called of God they, from the backside of the desert. Mm. David was anointed of Samuel at the point. David knew he was to be the king. Mm. But look at all the years it took. Mm. In fact, he was running from cave 
to the wilderness, yeah. to the Philistines. And, but God had given him a word. Hmm. There was even temptation for him to use the arm of the flesh to get on the throne. He refused twice. <laughs> he, wanted, he could have killed Saul. Hmm. But he allowed, he walked by faith. He trusted in the word of God that wow. God is faithful enough. Wow. He did not start as a king. He started as a shepherd boy, taking mm. care of sheep. Nobody reckoned with him in his house. The day Samuel came to Jesse's house, they didn't even invite him initially. But God has a plan. So I'm speaking to somebody here. You, the Lord has called you. Don't cut corners. Please do everything the Lord's way. And wait on the Lord. Be faithful in it. And God will make you rule over much when the right time comes. Hey. When the time of your appearing, there's a place in the scripture that talks about the fact that when the time of his appearing was due. So there's a time of your appearing, but step by step, keep on doing the word of God. Preach the word of God. It doesn't matter if the church looks little. It doesn't matter if you're an evangelist and you are not having big, citywide crusades, but you're just preaching one to one person on the street. One person, one person. Stay with the word of the Lord. Yeah. The Lord is watching and God's reward will come at the right time. Oh, yeah. Pastor, you, you, we, we can't rush these things. <laughs> we can't run. You, we looked at David. You touched a very important aspect just right now, talking about uh, going, through, going through the process. David had been anointed to be king. But God did not just throw him to be king. God had to bring him yeah. into the palace to be trained. Yeah. He, he entered the palace yeah. as a servant, as a musician. He, he did not come as, yes. a, as a pastor. He came as a music leader. <laughs> oh, yeah. And for yes. years... And then God had to train and be sure that he's not going to be vindictive. God had to be sure That's that right. he, because God had trained him first with the animals. He was faithful. Now God had to train him with people. My God. And this, this really blesses me because when we, when we are in church, when we, because we are talking, we are, we are believers, we are in church, we are pastors, we are talking about church people and, and all our people who are listening. When God puts you in a church, his intention is not that that's, the, that's, the, that's permanent. You, you are there to be trained, of course. Your position, what I mean, if you are there as an usher, maybe that's what you're going to do. But faithfulness has a way of increasing God's trust in our lives. I think we should speak right. a little bit more on right. this. Because people just move from church to church many times, not stay in one place to grow enough and build trust. Please, your take more on this, Pastor. Yes. The Bible, the Bible, yes, the Bible says we must, we must grow roots downwards mm. and then we will bear fruits upwards. Mm. Mm. You see, many people lack foundation. Mm. Foundation is very important. Um, the Bible talks about one of the, there are four categories of grounds when the sower sowed the seed. Jesus was speaking about that parable. And one of them, that Jesus Christ said, they have no roots in themselves. Mm. They have no roots. So when the problems come, they are easily removed. When you stay in a place, God wants you to develop roots, develop character. Yeah. Don't just get offended and leave. It is part of God's plan. You will face situations where you must grow in love. <laughs> And the way you grow in love is some people will rob you the wrong way. Step they on will your say toes. Something wrong. They will, but God, it's part. Of, step on your toes. It's part of the plan of God that you must learn to respond with love. And God watches your response because He's creating character in you. God watches your response. You cannot entrust power. Yes, He watches it. You, you can. God cannot commit great power into people that don't have deep character. It will cause a crisis, mega scandals, and it will bring a reproach on the name of the Lord. Wow. So, wow. so, so don't rush the process. Wow. Stay still, be still, learn, and allow God to move you at his own pace. Hey. 
no wonder the Bible says promotion. Okay. There are some things. Yes, go on, go on. Yes. No wonder the Bible says promotion does not come from the from from anywhere. Promotion comes from the Lord. Meaning, it is God that knows when you are actually ready. Not even your pastor. Hey, God will have to inspire see, your we, leader we to say, "Okay, our... please go ahead, pastor." Yes. Um, we started our first church. I was twenty-five years old. There are some things I was praying for. I was believing for. In fact, to be specific, in terms of anointing and in terms of finances, mm. it is just the last one or two years I started seeing those things, mm. and I'm now 55 years old. Wow! And I and now when I look back, I see the wisdom of God mm. for me not to have certain things when I was 25. Ah! I don't. I couldn't have handled them. Let Why us be humble and let us be sincere. Yes. I needed to grow even in wisdom. Mm. I, there's some kind of people now that come to our ministry that I pastor. Um, if I had been pastoring those kind of people at the age of 25, <laughs> I would have, I, prob I could have even have destroyed their lives. <laughs> <laughs> because they are people that are very notable, mm. wealthy, and all of that. Mm. I would in those days maybe I would have been thinking or more of the wealth. They would have become like a my message. Yes. Yeah. But now, hey, it's just I, I, it took a while. But you get to a point where you you anything God says, mm. anything God says, you don't mind. You mm. you just go to you know, stay. It. Yeah. and preach it yeah. praise the lord Hallelujah. so so that is that is something that i tell young people that please don't rush the process mm. let the lord move you at his own pace let him move you at his own pace let let if it's not if something you're not ready for don't rush into it because if you rush into it there are consequences wow there are consequences and apart from that, this is ministry is spiritual warfare. Mm. There's Amen. an enemy that is looking for us to make a wrong move, and uh, he doesn't play fair. Mm. So, young, uh, let's get back to it. As a young minister, as a young servant of God, please don't keep stop looking for ready-made platforms. Mm. Pay the pay the, the your dues. Pay your dues, spend time in um, prayer, and be faithful in little, and let nice. God promote you at the right time. Um, that is that is something that I, I really feel is very important, and it's lacking in many circles today. Amen. Amen. Now, th thank you, Pastor, for this wonderful one. Um, now, talking generally as to Christians at the moment, uh, uh, all believers, I believe, because when we look at um, Ephesians and, and, and Romans and, and Corinthians, I'm talking now in, in regards to the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit, all these things that Christ had intended for every believer to grow in. And in, and in Ephesians, we see in, in chapter 4, uh, from, yes, four, yes. four from verse 1, it was made clear Jesus' intention that he has given everyone a gift. There is a ministry that everybody has. But this ministry cannot come into existence if our character is not built. So, And your character cannot be built except in the church. Where you have to love. You, you, in your place, if you're outside among people who are not saved... You can choose to do whatever you want. You can quit. You can tell them to go, uh, you know, just get out of your face. You can tell them, speak to the hand. But when you are in church, you are expected to be a believer. You are expected to love people. You are expected to, uh, I didn't want to say endure, but enjoy people. So our characters are built in church to, for the purpose of God preparing us for the ministry. Because whatever it is God has in stock for you, God cannot release you into it. 
until you are ready. And only He knows when you are ready. And your readiness is determined by how quick you learn to stand on the Word of God. Because the Word of God is, the Bible says, is our weapon, is our tool, is your shield, is your armor of faith, is your sword of the Spirit. So if you don't have your tools, it's like you're going to farm, but you don't have any tools. You're going to school, you don't have any, any equipment. It, it's not possible. God has a ministry for you. I mean you. For you, Grace. For you, Sarah. For you, Cecil. Comfort. All of you. God has a ministry. And when I say ministry, of course, it's, it's not necessarily pioneering work. Like a big church or a, a huge humongous ministry. But God has a ministry for every single one of you. And these ministries cannot come into existence until God is sure that your character base is solid. Because without, if, if you're not faithful in the little, how, who will give you more, the Bible says. I've just been talking about the importance of building a character base that will sustain the gift. God has given every one of us a gift, but there is also a ministry. It can be ministry of help. Yes. It can be in the fivefold ministry. Yes. Whatever ministry, every single one of us. But what will sustain yes. that ministry is character. Pastor, what is, what, where is the place, the importance of, I'm talking, we are talking about believers now, not just ministry. Importance of having a foundational good character. You see, the Bible talks about two sides to the operation of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. In Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. Hmm. And then in the book of Corinthians, we see the gifts of the Spirit. Huh. First Corinthians 12. Huh. Now, there are nine gifts of the Spirit, nine fruit of the Spirit. Hmm. Um, the priests in the Old Testament, the garment of the priest, if you look at it, under the garment, the Lord spoke to Moses that he should put bells hmm. and in between the fruit, pomegranate. It, it was so bell, lit bell, pomegranate bell, pomegranate bell, all round. So that when the priest is moving, the, the bell is ringing, but the, the fruit pomegranate causes the, the ringing of the bell to be sweet and melodious. Yeah. Now, so what God is saying is, if you have gifts, the bell represents gifts, hmm. healing, miracles, but with, it is like jangling. You must break it with fruit in between so that it makes a sweet, melodious Hallelujah. tune. Mm. And, and this is lacking if the fruit is not there. It, it will put off everybody. Mm. The fruit of the love, joy, peace. These are the character of Christ, behavior, character mm. of Christ, mm. spiritual growth, being a disciple. We don't talk too much about discipleship anymore. Being a disciple, disciplined follower of Christ. That's a disciple, a disciplined follower of Christ. You discipline your words, you discipline your eyes, you discipline your thoughts, you discipline your body, you put the body under. Christians must learn that. That is when anything we are now doing to reach the unbeliever, it, it is, they, they get impressed. Because unbelievers, uh, they want to, they are only going to be impressed with our message when they look at the messenger. You see, unbelievers are not reading their Bibles. They are reading us. They are reading us, Christians. Wow. We are the ones they are reading. They are not reading their Bibles. Wow. And the Bible allows it. That's why Paul said, we are epistles read of all men. Wow. So we cannot say, don't judge me. Don't, we cannot tell unbelievers, don't judge, don't read me. Don't, don't, don't take my life for it. Just take what I say. No, we are epistles. It is written, we are epistles. They must read us. <laughs> Amen. So our Amen. behavior, our lifestyle that, that, is, that is different from the will of the world, character, Wow. Dedication, commitment, loyalty to God, loyalty to our pastors and our and the vision of our local congregation, loyalty those of us who are married, loyalty to our spouses, yeah. uh, commitment. Those those kind of things uh, they, they go along with. They are the things that form a solid foundation. So that anything built on fruit of the spirit 
and the character of Christ. It will stand. The winds may come, waves may come, but we are built for the rock. In fact, they will come. Yeah. 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 The, the challenges will come to hand if we are if our character is is, is intact. It's well and it is solidly. Mm. So I tell Christians, Christians, if I'm to choose between fruit of the spirit and gifts of the spirit, of course, God did not say we should choose. But if I were to naturally choose, I will choose fruit of the spirit first. Because you cannot get miss it by walking in love. No. God is love. Yes. That that's it. So develop first the fruit, your character, grow in your character. Mm. I have seen some people shortly after getting saved, they got into anointing, power, and all of that. But they did not develop character. They did not grow in the fruit of the spirit. They won't last. And did not even emphasize it. The way they crashed, it was scandalous. They don't last. So it is and unfortunately some of them um even when i was setting on the ministry some that we set out about the same time um and i just said no there's some things i will not do i will not compromise in this area i, I would rather walk with the integrity and character of christ some of them laughed at me that oh and they it looked like they took off while we, our own ministry was crawling initially yeah today they are nowhere to be found mm. so character is very different initially but listen you may not all that will be laughing but you will laugh last you will, and laugh, you will last. laugh longest mm. if you stay with character amen amen it is said that yes. the gift will will lift you up but the character will keep you there that's it that's so, it. so, I, 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 because why, why am I, why am I, I believe one of the things that the Lord is laying on my heart for this season is because God is about to release some people into the ministry. God is about to take people into the next phases. And, but he also wants them to hear the importance of yes. recognizing the need to be ready. We not just come to church and sit and hope that yes. it's a big ministry that will fall on your laps. No. What are you doing now? David was tendering the sheep. Even though he knew yeah. he was maltreated, he wasn't behind the desert complaining. He was there writing songs to yeah. the Lord, blowing kisses to the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why do you think he was saying such songs? Because nobody right. was there for him. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. <laughs> he was lonely. <laughs> but he wasn't complaining That's to the true. parents. And God picked him up. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. And God located it there. Yeah. And God sees, you see, I want to say this. Some, some people are, they always feel that nobody is appreciating me. Nobody is acknowledging me. Don't, you don't need that now. The Lord's eyes are on you. Yeah. He is watching how you are doing things. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Yeah. Be faithful. Yeah. And uh, and do it not looking for even the reward of human beings per se. Ah. We are serve and build the kingdom of God, and let that be. Let that even satisfy you. Hmm. And then, if and when God feels it needs to do more with your life, God will do it. It will be so clear. If I you yourself will be wondering, ah, God, are you sure? And God says, yeah, yeah. I'm Sure. Is it me? You're just facing with a right heart. Mm. You are just simply doing what your hand finds to do. Do it with all your mind. Yes, sir. When you do that, the Lord will be taking note. He will count it. And if and when He wants to move you to something different, oh, He is big enough to get to you to do it. But be faithful and be act. Serve with all your heart. Serve. Many people don't want to serve anymore. They want to be served. Mm. But Jesus said he himself came to not, to, not to be served, but to serve, to lay down his own life for all multitudes of people. So be an example.
take the example of Jesus and pick that example and serve with a right, sincere heart. Yeah. And, um, and, um, and be loyal and be faithful. Yeah. And, then, and then don't say, don't think that anything is beneath you. Mm. Don't think that menial tasks. No, no. If you have to arrange the chairs, please do it. Yeah. If it's your job to fold the wires, the cables for the microphone, please do it. Mm. If you are the one that's supposed to play the keyboard, play it to the best of your ability. Mm. If you look at that, a, a happy player, David, ended up becoming a king. I mean, the king of the he was, of he was just, one You can say he's a keyboardist today. He became so, king. You can. Yes, yes. You don't know. You cannot. You don't know what God has. But God saw His heart. Man, man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. So, so that heart is very important. A, a heart that is sincere, humble, and is willing to serve is what God is. It's precious in God's sight. I see that more than is... even your ability, your oratorical prowess. Hmm. I yes. see that this is yes, what the Lord is saying to us today, uh, like fixing our heart. I'm, I'm reminded again of my namesake, Joseph. Even though Joseph was maltreated, he was spoken yes. against, he was lied against, he was put in prison for what he didn't do, Joseph did not stop serving. Yes. When, the, when the potter and the mm -hmm. baker had a dream, Joseph kicked into gear and still served. He used his gift even though he was in a wrong place in his mind. Remember, Joseph did not know the yes. will of God. Joseph did not know God has a plan that from prison is to from that prison is to palace. As far as he was concerned, he's in a situation where he's been he's been unjustly imprisoned. Yet he allowed his gift to function. He still served. Yeah. Can we serve even when we feel offended? Hey, Shatalabasi. Yes. And when we feel that that life is unfair to us. That we, can we serve when we feel that life is unfair to us? Hmm. Can we serve? Can we keep on serving when we feel maybe um, so maybe some things have passed us by? Look at Zechariah and hmm. Elizabeth. Hmm. I mean, they didn't have a child for a long time. Hmm. It, but he kept up to the credit of Zechariah. Hmm. He kept on serving. Hmm. Wow. He kept on serving. Some backsliding. And said, What? I believe God. What? I am a righteous man. God has not done this for me. God has not done. He kept to his credit. And one day, he was just in the place of service. The angel Gabriel appeared. The angel appeared. Brought a word. Serving. 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 Hmm. Keep serving. There's somebody you are watching. You feel, look, I've walked with the Lord. It looks like God has not heard me mm. or God is not fair to me yeah. or life has not treated me well. Mm. The Lord's word to you is keep serving. Keep serving. Keep serving. Because when I will, the Lord says, when I will come visiting you, I will come looking for you in the place of service. That is where I'm coming to look for you. In if the I place... get to where you should be serving, of service. if I get to where you should be serving and you are not there, then the blessings will come upon you. Yeah. Keep, don't let anything stop you from serving the Lord. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Keep serving. And then I, I, I just want to, wow, Pastor, it's, it's like we're just starting. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Keep serving. And for all of you Hallelujah. guys, you, you church in both in Nigeria, India, there are people from India who are watching right now, uh, here in Europe and in in. Amen. in yeah, in Norway, if there is anything God, I believe He is looking for. The Bible says, you know, I, we we're just back from Berlin, Germany, this this couple of days with all the crisis going on. You know, yeah. one thing I've realized that the news is always worse than what is happening in reality. So uh, don't always oh, take wow. the news <laughs> for reality. Uh, I was we were, we were wow. there last week with we everything, you know. So, and but one thing that I kept hearing for a lot a lot of from a lot of Christians. Let's pray for revival. We are praying for revival. And I almost sometimes want to say, please stop saying that. You don't pray for revival. You rough revival. You carry yeah. revival. God did not say pray for revival. He said pray for laborers. People that will carry it. That's right. Because the mission, is, the, the, the mission is so ripe. There are people ready to be, to be spoken to. But where are the people to go and do it? 
I mean, what did Paul say in, was it in Romans? Right. Uh, how shall they hear the gospel except someone is sent? Who, who, who are we going to send? Man. So these are the things that, in fact, I want to play a video. That. I want to play a video. I believe also for you, Pastor, it's it's gonna okay. it's gonna stir something in your heart. And uh, right. please let's take a look at this video, and we'll be Go back on, in please. a jiffy. Europe is the only continent on earth in which the church is in severe decline. It is as though the body of Christ is bleeding from the heart at this time. Europe desperately, desperately, desperately needs people to go and talk about Jesus. While the church worldwide experiences unprecedented growth, churches across Europe are closing their doors. With the notable exception of post-communist Eastern Europe, the traditional church in every European country is shrinking dramatically. Looking at the British statistics, the, the decline that we have known for the last 50 years is reaching the point where a number of our denominations are now saying, if the current trend continues for another 20, 30 years, we will be extinct. We will have no churches left. As Christianity in Western Europe takes a back seat, the spiritual, moral and social consequences reverberate throughout society. The land that once sent missionaries to reach the unevangelized world has become a place of increasing darkness, in need of mission. Drawing from these deep wells of the past. I just made a short one there. The land that has sent missionaries around the world has become a land in need of missionaries. Pastor, what did you see? What, 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 what are you feeling? I, I, see, I see dryness, but... Think about it. The drier the wood, firewood, the drier it is, Shanda. the better or the better, the most ideal it is for you to use it to create a bonfire. Yeah. So what what we just need in Europe? Europe is right for revival. What we need in Europe is just the fire. Of God's presence. Mm. The wood is dry. Yes. Excellent. Let's see it as a positive, in a positive way. It is. But you see, yeah, because they are open, they, 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 in Europe, they are opening up more to the spiritual and the supernatural in yeah. a negative way. I was, I was preaching in Belfast about four years ago and preaching, and I gave an altar call, and one of the people in front, which was a young girl of about 21. She said, she's a witch. So I said, I'm going to minister to you right now. I cast out the spirit from her and I told her, now you are free. She said, I know. I said, how do you know? She said, the, the spirit, I saw it leave me. Oh, I thought, am, am I in Africa or am I in Europe? <laughs> oh, yeah. And she got saved. And so, People Amen. are looking for the supernatural. Only that in Europe, only that they are looking at it in the wrong ways. They are doing all these things, tarot cards, and the uh, Ouija boards, and yeah. all. Yeah. They are hungry, but they are not hungry for religion, dead religion. Yeah. No. They are not. They are not interested in intellectual kind of theology or Christianity. They need. Power. Christianity with a demonstration of the spirit and power. Yes, sir. Just like Paul said in the Bible. I believe that the revival in Europe will not look like any of the revivals we've seen before. No. You are going to see people with five colors of painting in their hair and many piercings in their ears. They are going to be apostles. They are going to be pastoring Mega churches. Tattoos all over the place. Like Lord have mercy. Tattoos. <laughs> Listen, be ready, but you will get there. You will not be, you cannot deny the Holy Ghost on them. Mm. So it's going to be different. It's going to be not like the old, the old, but the same Holy Spirit. Mm. But the people that God will use is going to use the people that many people who are religious will feel this one cannot be used. Yeah. So there is, the, uh, Europe is at the edge of mega revival. 
That's what I see. Amen. That's what I see. Amen. And and it's going to be on the highways and the byways, the streets, all the hippies, all yes. of the good guys. They're going to get born against spiritual, the evil spirit out of them, Holy Ghost, feel them. And you're going to see great things on the streets of Europe. Hallelujah. It's going to be awesome and mighty. Amen. That's and what another, I see. That's what I'm prophesying. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Another angle I was looking at it is that the, the, the harvest is so ripe and so ripe that our prayer is that could it be you? Could it be me? Could it be any one of us listening to that God is saying? Because without information, people don't have transformation. Without information, you don't yes. know that, oh, wow, so there's this need. Lord, I, here am I, send me. You know, so a lot yeah. of us sitting in churches, what I sense the Lord is saying to me, a lot of us sitting in churches for many years, it's time to say, oh, wow, Lord, send me. And, and God wants yeah. to prepare people and send them out. Like I said, I was just back from Germany and I like my Lord Jesus. You know, here wow. also in our own nation, you know, we are, I think we are too... My, my, my prayer, my challenge to the body of Christ and to all of you who are listening is don't be too comfortable where you are when souls are dying out there. Look at the example you gave in Belfast. Yeah. Imagine if you had no authority, yeah. you had no power and a witch came and stood before you. Nothing will happen. If you were a nominal yeah. Christian. So, so that's what I'm saying. It's an encouragement to us. When I, I bring this video and I'm thinking, Lord, please tear somebody up. Let somebody get angry at the status quo and say, I, I'm going to I, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to make a change. God use me for a change. Amen. And so, Amen. Pastor, I know you're, uh, you, you're in Nigeria. Uh, you have work around, I mean, states and in other parts of the country, but in uh, the, the world. My prayer is that we can raise more. I know God has given a, a word about especially Nigerians that God will send across even more. There are Nigerians everywhere right now, but we need more missionaries in a lot of these places. Amen. So I'm praying that Amen. the Lord will raise more people. This is one of my, my desire to create an awareness that the mission Amen. field is so ripe. And for yes. our people here to, to like raise up and say, wow, Pastor Joseph, missions, I'm ready. It's not everybody that is called to go on mission, but it's important that everybody is aware of the mission. Yeah. Man. I, I believe that um, even where some, some of us are called to go across um, national borders, mm. just like you went to Germany and all. But all of us are called to be missionaries in a sphere. Mm. If you work in a school, a school teacher, you're a missionary there. Yeah. You work in a hospital, you're a missionary there. I was talking, well, there's a friend of ours, before he stepped into full-time ministry, he worked in a hospital mm. for five years. He said he wanted to see the dead raised. Um, so he tried a few times. They didn't get raised. Mm. So God said, if you want to see the dead raised, why don't you ask him in that hospital? So the hospital had a petition for an administrative officer and he worked there for five years. He said he saw two people raised from the dead. Wow. And God told him, Well, you see, this is what you do. This, if you had stayed inside church, you probably never have experienced it. No. He was not a pastor, he was just a child of God. Yeah. You know, so there are, so every child of God, God can use you. There are ways. Uh, one of the things I love to teach uh, Christians is. How to function in the supernatural on a day to day basis. How the supernatural can be natural. Hmm. How the uh, revelation gifts. God can give you something for just a friend in your office and you can package that um, revelation or that word of knowledge and give them and it will open them up to the gospel. How you can. Um, do prophetic evangelism and how you can do power evangelism without and it comes so naturally mm. without you screaming and shouting and just you just glory man. also we need to equip believers to understand that you can be in your office or you can be at a you can go and buy ice cream and God can give you a word for the person selling you the ice cream mm. And you can, I could drop it in a non-religious way. 
and the Holy Spirit will back it up. See, it's good. All these things that we are mystified and we think belongs to a great man of God, uh, they are going to be for every child of God. Yeah. So that because we all have our own mission field and we must go in there with the demonstration of the spirit and power of God. Hmm. Pastor, you have said something nice now. Well, we've been saying a lot of nice things. <laughs> this teaching you're talking about, can you produce and send to us so we can air it? Can you produce a teaching like this for us so we can air it here? So that you, you have it already done, maybe maybe, right. uh, maybe 50 minutes or something, or 30 minutes into P. I don't know how many sections that we can air it so that the quality is better, so that mm. the signal is not breaking. Well, if we play it as a video, it's smooth like butter. So, hey, people listening, do you think would like to hear this teaching? How to supernaturally natural, evangelism in the supernatural natural way. If you want Pastor Yinka to do that, please write it and say, yes, we need it. <laughs> so, Pastor, we will I will be it will be a delight if you can work on this for us, okay? All right, by the grace of God, I, I will do it. By the grace of God, I will connect. <laughs> Amen. I know you're Thank busy, you but... Uh... I feel that. I saw... Yeah, I saw that also in... Uh, we have a church in um, Ireland, outside of Dublin. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so, once in a year, we normally go there and have meetings with them and some other churches around. And when I go to the other churches around, that's what I teach them, because that is what Europe needs. Mm. Europe is an influx of the negative supernatural, whether we like it or not, in Europe. There is, there is um, uh, Eastern religion, there is New Age, there is, there is um, addiction, substance abuse, and all. Those things, it takes the power of God to deal with them, not just counseling, no. you know, taking them for counseling and all. No, 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 no. So, but I teach, I, I, I go to those churches, I teach them, once you're going to get to a field, how to function in vision, revelation, how everybody, and before the service is over, they, they will be prophesying, they will be having visions, they will be having revelation, they will pick up things in the spirit, and I'll teach them how to minister. So that does, it's an apostolic kind of teaching, because what we need to equip the church, the believers, and release them, to the highways and the byways. Exactly. So that, that's it. Europe is going to turn around by the grace of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My, 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 my. Now, I, this pastor, Pastor Inka that I'm speaking to, those of you who just joined here, he was one of my pastors over 30 years, about 30 years ago in Kaduna. And uh, the Lord led him to go start a new work. Uh, like he said, he started, he was 25. So I was 20. So, <laughs> oh my God. I think Darubo. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Thank so, God. The Lord is faithful. <laughs> he, he, he is really faithful. And look at how God God uh, divided us in different parts of the world. He took you from Ibadan to Lagos and took me from Kaduna to Germany and then here in Norway to the US and then to Norway. And God decides where we will be and serve him. As you rightly said, some of us, God has called us to physical missions outgoing. But there are some of some of you who are listening, that God has called you to, to the different spheres that he was talking about. Uh, maybe it's finance, maybe it's politics, maybe it's uh, entertainment, all kinds of spheres that God has called us to, to be effective. Even music. Uh, like you saw, uh, this music I, I played for you uh, that I produce in India, uh, open doors I didn't think was wow. possible. Because I, I had to learn their language, produce the music in their language, and I, I, I actually put two languages together to reach a lot more people. We brought different people from... Wow. Music crosses across cultures. They don't even have to hear. Yeah. You probably didn't well, hear what I was singing or what we were singing, but wow, you, you will just sit yeah. there and be looking. This is... It does something. It's yeah. a spare. So, so Ilze, you are listening to me. Yeah. You are on your violin and... Uh, you create something that you, you can you can ask God for a heavenly sound that when you play that your violin, yes. people who listen to it will be mesmerized and the, things will happen. I believe we are in the days of signs yes. and wonders and miracles. One of the greatest example for me was when Jesus was going uh, example of evangelism, supernatural evangelism 
was when Jesus was going to minister to the woman at the, at the well in Samaria. Jesus went to the woman and just asked for natural water. Can I have some water, Jesus said. And she said, and, uh, you know, discussion starts from there. Perhaps your own way is a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And in the midst of the discussion, Jesus suddenly switched into the supernatural and asked her and said to her, uh, go call your husband. He was setting her up. He didn't come with a big Torah Bible that she can see. He didn't come with a priest, priestly attire because she didn't recognize who he was. He looked normal yeah. and natural like, a, like somebody was on a job. And he says, go call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. And he said, you're right, because you have had five. So the prophetic and, and, and the, uh, the word of knowledge yeah. kicked in. Supernatural cool. gift kicked in into the evangelism. And that made her say, ah, you, are, you must be a prophet. And through that, she went and won her city to Christ. And this is what we're talking about that we need in Europe. That people will rise up, build character, and begin to operate. And God can trust us with the gift necessary for the work that needs to be done. Pastor? Yeah. There is a, there is a lady in in scotland she's born again and spiritual she has a coffee shop hmm. and in her town she noticed that somebody started a palms reading play hmm. so she put she got a signboard in front of her coffee shop coffee shop that had your dreams interpreted and coming for spiritual reading she put it there and People will come in and she will sit them down in the corner and tell them, do you have a dream? You, you had a dream that would bother you. And when they talk about the dream, while they're talking about the dream, Billy gives that word of knowledge. Then either it's an interpretation of the dream, may not be a spiritual, but God gives that interpretation for, and gives a word of knowledge about what was happening in their house and all. And they break down in tears. She leads them to Christ. She ministers healing to them. She can tell them, you, you, okay, you came in here to know your future. But do you know what? The Holy Spirit knows your future. And she begins holding their hand and praying in tongues. And the people begin to feel the anointing of God and break down in tears. Leads them to Christ. And she gets, oh, in a month, she gets dozens saved. Especially the young people. Because they are looking for reality. This sounds exciting. It looks like something I can do. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, we will we'll talk about it later. I'm going to see, what I'm just saying is, God will help us. Amen. I see new radical methods. Wow, we, wow, we cannot wow. do it. It cannot be church as usual. It will yes. be church unusual. Yes, Amen. Church unusual. So this, 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 I'm believing the Lord for in the next phase. But unfortunately, time has gone again. Look at it. I, I don't understand how the time flies. I think <laughs> it's already 10 and, uh, and we, have to, we have to release the people at 10 o'clock. But Pastor Inka, okay. I'm so honored that you will honor this uh, interview today and, this, and be my guest on this, on this uh, program. Encourage, I'm sure somebody was encouraged. If you are blessed tonight, would you please write and say thank you, Pastor Yinka, for that fantastic time. Several points, even I took down, and we're going to work towards. My God. Can we say thank you to Pastor? Amen. Thank you so much for joining yeah, I us. I just want to also say thank you, Dr. Joseph. Congratulations on your upcoming 50th birthday. I celebrate you. Welcome to the fifth floor. <laughs> <laughs> And, welcome uh, to the fifth floor. I like to... that. I like that. Yeah. You are entering the kingdom of grace. Thank you and, so much. And get ready for new realms of grace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. The Lord bless you. And congratulations and... on your wedding anniversary also. Thank you. That was yesterday. To the first lady, the woman of God. Congratulations. Thank you very much, ma'am, for marrying my friend and being a good, good, excellent, excellent partner Amen. and collaborator to my dear friend. Amen. We appreciate you, woman of God. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Really, thank you, thank you. She's, she's listening. She's saying thank you, Pastor, and she's hallelujah. 
Uh, and help us send greetings also to Pastor Deola. We we miss her this time. I'm sure maybe next time yes. we'll be able to see her face too. Next time, yes. Thank God's grace. All right, Amen. sir. Once again, everyone, thank you for joining. It's a pleasure always having you join us every night. Today is the ninth day. We have 14, 41 more days to go. And so join us again tomorrow. Tomorrow morning for prayer as usual at 7 a.m. Uh, a.m. and then tomorrow night by the way tomorrow night our guest is reverend victor adeyemi he's in vancouver wow. canada so he's joining us from canada and uh we're gonna have a wonderful time all these people i'm bringing to you you know these are men that have been proven and tested they have been in the ministry for years and and, and so i'm bringing them to be a blessing to you and we thank the lord for this opportunity we didn't have to wait to to, to buy you tickets to come here. Eh? We could get through to your heart right away from here. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord bless you all. Thank you again for joining. Let's, let's meet up again tomorrow and, and God will perfect all that concerns you all in Jesus' name. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.
Para ya. 